Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on? YouTube Metal Complex here, and today I'm going to be talking about a knife that I am really, really excited about. Something that uh, I should have talked about a long time ago. I'm not sure why I didn't. Uh, this is the CJRB Cutlery. Feldspar. This is actually the large version of the knife. It does come in a small version as well. And as uh, you might expect, I will be leaving links down below where you guys can check both versions out for yourself. This knife was sent to me by CJRB directly. I actually reached out to them after handling the Centros, which is, I mean, it's easily one of the greatest folding knives. I'm sorry, the, the, the greatest budget folding knives that has ever existed, right? And I, I took a look at all their stuff and I saw this guy and I was like, what the, what is that? That has a lot, it looks like it has a lot of the elements that I would have preferred on the Centra. So I reached out to them and they said, yeah, sure, we'll send you, we'll send you it. Um, so thank you so much, uh, CJRB Cutlery. Full disclosure, that's where it came from. Thank you, uh, thank you so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. Uh, if you'd like to check out my Patreon and get your hands on some of these cool stickers and some other exclusive benefits, there is, of course, a link right down in the description. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. So overall length of the uh, large feldspar coming in at eight inches overall. Blade length coming in at exactly three and a half and cutting edge coming in at about 3.3, yeah, about 3.3 inches overall. This is a really good size. This is the size of knife that I prefer to carry. It makes it very versatile. And while I, I completely understand that not everybody can carry a blade, you know, length of three and a half inches. Um, you know, fortunately, the small one there, I'll, I'll have to get my hands on a small one, but the smaller one might make that a little bit easier for some people. This is my preferred size of knife, about eight to eight and a quarter inches. So I'm a big fan of that. Lots of cutting edge, and it doesn't look like any of it is directly in the cutting path of the thumb stud, which is fantastic. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons here. Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, the Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. So you can see there, uh, it is shorter, but by no means a small knife. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 uh, coming in at 8.3 inches overall. Let me also point out what I really like about this particular one. Here, for whatever reason, uh, lately, I I've come to very much enjoy Jade G10. Now, I ordered the scales on the PM2 uh, because, I, because I like uh, the Jade G10, right? And um, I'm noticing now that the jade on the CJRB is much more vibrant. Some people love this color and some people hate it. There's not many people in between, right? It's pretty polarizing. I love it, but wow, this is quite a bit more green than whatever this is on my PM2. Actually, this kind of looks gross now, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty cool. If you're wondering if you know the jade on the CJRB, if it was actually as colorful as in pictures, yeah, it actually is quite colorful. I'm I'm pretty impressed with that. We'll we'll look at that more here in a sec. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in also at eight inches. I think this is an excellent size comparison. This, to me, in, in a lot of ways, the the profile is fairly similar to the Benchmade Griptilian, and this uh, this profile, you know, over time has proven to be very very popular. Um, there are a lot of things that the the um, feldspar is actually doing better than the griptilian. The Ritter Hogue is its own mo is its own is its own monster. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're we're gonna trust me when I say we're gonna talk more about this. Last but not least, the Spyderco Para Three. Para Three is coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. And you know what? Let's go ahead and put it up against my um, current favorite budget knife of all time. Um, the Civivi Praxis. The Civivi Praxis is a much bigger knife, and uh, it's been um, it's been a while since I crowned this thing on my channel King of the Budget Knives. Um, I love the uh, the Praxis, but it's big, um, absolutely. And as far as cutting edge go, because of the forward choil on the Praxis, we're actually looking at the same amount of cutting edge. We're looking at less overall handle, less overall knife, but the same overall cutting edge, which is something. I want you guys to, you know, take note of for sure. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about action. How is the action on this guy? Um, this is a liner lock that's running on bearings. It's got a nice detent, plenty of access to the thumb stud, and absolutely perfectly satisfying flipping action. 
whether you're doing the forward thick or you're doing a uh, forward flick or you're doing the reverse flick, either way, it is exactly what I want in a thumb stud deployer. But what's interesting is like a few other budget designs that are popping up here and there uh, right now, it's on bearings. So you get to enjoy the bearings, but you also get to enjoy that thumb stud opener. I, 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 for whatever reason, I really like knives that are running on bearings that uh, have thumb stud openers, right? Especially ones that are designed properly, easy to engage, easy to fidget with, right? Uh, and then they don't have the flipper tab, so they, they just are that much more pocket friendly, right? So if they can get the design just right without getting that thumb stud in the cutting path, then, you know, great. And this, this does this. It only takes a little tiny bit of encouragement to get this thing to close, and it's just wonderful. I am very, very happy with the action on this guy. Absolutely. Um, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. We'll get out my uh, handy dandy WIA uh, bit selector and WIA magnetic driver, two uh, items that are extremely inexpensive and extremely recommendable. You can find them down in the Amazon store that I referenced at the beginning of every single video. Uh, just pull up in the store and look for knife maintenance. Uh, like most CJRBs, I'm guessing that the pivot is T8. Let's go ahead and check that here real quick. Yep, T8 pivot. And then I'm, I'm guessing, unfortunately, that the body screws are T6, um, which is usually the case. It's like I always say, I don't like T6, but it's never a deal breaker. You just have to be careful if you're going to take the knife apart because the T6 fasteners can strip and a T6 bit, you know, the teeth on it can can kind of kind of bend out or fray away. Um, but that's okay. The hardware is very minimal. This is exactly what I always talk about when I look for a good design. I want a pivot screw and I want two body screws and either standoffs or a backspacer. And I don't want the hardware to be prioritized uh, over the pocket clip or the lanyard hole to be prioritized over the pocket clip. And that is exactly what they have avoided here. So that's perfect. Minimal hardware, simple construction, easy to take apart. Yeah, it's T6 screws, but okay, not that big of a deal, right? Let's go ahead and talk about carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here that we are looking at fairly similar thickness. The scales here, however, are contoured. So there's a little bit more thickness, but it's like I always say, I will take a little bit of excess thickness if I'm gaining contouring. Why? Because it feels the hand better. This feels like a more solid, more sturdy object, and it feels like I have a better purchase on the knife because it is contoured. Whether or not that's actually true, I don't know, but it creates for a pleasant experience. I will always take contouring if I can get it, 100%. Let's go ahead and talk about carry profile in terms of height up against the Spyderco PM2 and Para 3, two uh, knives that have awkward carry profiles and nobody ever complains about, right? Yeah, this is a winner, guys. In terms of height and length, we're looking at a, a body length of just barely longer than the Spyderco Para 3 and definitely shorter than Spyderco PM2. And because it doesn't have a flipper tab or any weird areas on the blade or the handle, I, it's nowhere near as tall as either of them. So that's fine. And this does slip in and out of the pocket with extreme ease. You have contoured scales, but they are not textured and they don't need to be. The purchase on this knife is absolutely fantastic. We are looking at uh, something that I talked about in the Centros that I wanted. I was like, I wish it was contoured and the G10 wasn't as thick and it had countersunk steel liners, right? Well, guess what? That's what we're looking at here. Now they're not milled out and we're looking at a blade stock thickness of, uh, where's the calipers? There they are. Uh, blade stock thickness. Let's go ahead and turn this guy on. Take a look here. Uh, about 125,000. So we're in uh, Benchmade Griptilian territory. It's not super thick. This isn't a small knife, but it's not a massive knife either. Uh, it comes in right about what you'd expect. Uh, a little over four ounces, 4.1 ounces. I think that's pretty similar actually to the uh, Ritter Hogue. Let's go ahead and weigh that guy. It actually is heavier. And I know the Benchmade Griptilian is similar. So. You know, those are uh, two of the most iconic folding knives ever. So again, you know, people are, oh, the weight, oh gosh, the, my mini bug out weighs negative 14 ounces, right? Um, I'm kidding. But yeah, uh, again, like some of the most iconic knives of all time weigh right around there, which is why I like to carry knives between four and six and a half ounces because it's lightweight enough for me to enjoy it, but it's also solid enough and heavy enough that I feel good when I'm using it and I'm reminded that it's actually in my pocket. I've washed too many lightweight knives uh, for that to be enjoyable. And also I kind of, you know, it's like I've talked about before, I kind of like the heft. So this is over that whole 
ounce and inch thing just by a little bit. 3.5 inches of blade for four ounces of knife or 4.1 ounces of knife, whatever. It's, it's in the territory that I would call plenty good. If you are wearing athletic shorts, skinny jeans, leather pants, right, whatever, it's probably not going to be as pleasant as if you're wearing normal pants, right? And I say normal pants, normal jeans, normal khakis, normal, you know, or like work pants, things like that. You're going to be just fine. No big deal. All right. Did we cover everything? I think that we did. So let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy here. So um, CJRB and Artisan Cutlery like to do this pivot collar thing. And I have seen many CJRBs and many Artisan Cutlery knives where the pivot collar contrasts or does not contrast well with the color behind it. And some of them do, right? They do some orange and some black. In fact, I've got, um, well, I can't remember where that knife is. Um, but uh, they, they do orange and black, and that, you know, to me looks okay. I, I think they do some in blue, right? Um, the One of the weirder ones, I saw orange with brass on the Artisan Cutlery Proponents, right? Depending on which version of this knife you get. I mean, they do have multiple colors, by the way. So if you're like, I like the knife, I just don't like the color. There's a ton of different colors. So check the links down there. Um, like they've got one in brown and in some, you know, the, the color of the, the pivot color looks a little bit funny. Um, but in this case, this golden bronze or almost, it's like a, I can't tell if it's copper or brass. It almost looks copper. In any case, I think it contrasts really well with this color here. This, this sort of not, I don't, it's not emerald green. It's kind of like pond it's kind of like pond green, you know, <laughs> but I like it. I think it's really cool. And I like the contrast there. It's really, really nice. Um, on top of that, not only is this aesthetically pleasing, but it's very well fitted. Everything is well fitted. This is a budget knife, but it is beyond the realm of what we expect, you know, in terms of a price. Or I think most people, I say, what's, what's the price of a budget knife? Most people are going to say, eh, about between 40 and 60 bucks, right? That's what people expect in today's knife world. This is actually less expensive than that, but it has features that are indicative of a knife that's slightly higher, right? The attention to detail around the scales, the contouring, of course, knocking down edges, and of course, all of the hardware fitting correctly. That's wonderful. The thumb studs are an excellent shape and size. It is very easy to engage these thumb, these thumb studs, and it is just effortless to deploy it. The blade, something that CJRB does that not a lot of other budget brands are doing is a tumbled finish. And this isn't like a slap, just whatever, you know, talk, let's just take this knife and huck it across the asphalt and whatever comes up, comes up. No, this is a nice stone wash. That's really, really nice. I like that a lot. This is impressive. I would not have, honestly, if I picked this knife up and I didn't know anything about CJRB, I would think, well, this is a pretty nice knife. You know, it has a lot of features that you find in knives that are well over $100, right? Without considering what the steel is or, or where it's made, I pick this up and I look at it and I'd be like, yeah, this is in line with a lot of stuff that I've handled between the $1 and $200 mark, right? Now I know, you know, people are like, G10 and a tumbled blade and you think that's well over $100. I, you know, it depends again where it's manufactured, what the steel is, right? And, I, and considering in this hypothetical scenario, I don't know anything about the brand or what, what price range they're, they're associated with, right? So yeah, I'm telling you, I've handled a lot of knives and the, the tumbling is really, really nice. On top of that, all these edges right here, these are all knocked down, right? Something that I almost just totally expect with a budget knife is that, well, the, it's going to be angular on the blade and the edges are going to be sharp and whatever. Now, Actually, it's not the case here. It's really nice. The blade is perfectly symmetrical. And even like the cutting edge is even or the final cutting bevel is even on both sides all the way down. Uh, it's, it's really, really nice, guys. This didn't come with any nicks or rolls. It came sharp. It does get reasonably thin behind that edge. It's not an absolute laser beam, but it absolutely is, is thin enough, right, to be impressive and to just make short work of any EDC task you throw at it. The blade shape itself is excellent. It's not quite as long and as pointy as the Centros. And the reason I keep bringing up the Centros is because it's also CGRB and it's also an excellent, if not the most excellent or best bang for your buck knife out there up to this point, right? Um, the blade is not quite as needle-like or as long. You do have reasonable thickness carried out to the tip, which gives me a little bit more of an impression of durability versus the, um, the Centros, right? Uh, there's still lots of room to drop down towards this cutting edge, which is why it gets fairly thin. The flat carries out about, I don't know, 80% the length of the blade. So yeah, you have a blade stock that's not super thick to begin with, but it, the form that it takes is one that is just about perfect for EDC in terms of, 
you know, a drop point blade, which is my, my, uh, you know, preferable blade shape for EDC. It's just, it's, it's the most versatile blade in my opinion. And it's just excellent. CJRB did this exactly right. Check up, check out the positioning of the thumb stud. It's pretty much splitting the difference, right? The last little bit of the, the edge is splitting the difference on the thumb stud, which means there's basically nothing in the cutting path. There's also a little bit of a choil up here. Now it's not a full choil, but I can come up to about right here before I start to risk running my finger up on the blade. Would I have preferred a little bit more room? Sure. Am I bothered by the fact that I don't get a little bit more room? No, because I can still make use of this. This is excellent right here. This gives me a little bit more ergonomic freedom on a, on a knife that's got an excellent ergonomic shape all the way around anyway, right? I do have freedom down here. I can move back here, I can move up a little bit, and I can choke up up here. This area right here is not so pointy that I feel like, oh, you know, I'm confined to either one point or the other, right? No, it's, it's really nice. This is a nice knife to hang on to, right? And that's great. You know, when the novelty of a new knife purchase wears off and you're left with the tool and what you're going to do with that tool, the factors that you appreciate are the ergonomic freedom. I mean, that's, to me, that's a huge part of whether or not I decide I want to carry that knife that day. I'm like, you know, I, uh, I liked it at first, but it's kind of weird to hang on to, right? Then I may not carry it. This knife? No, I'm always going to enjoy carrying it because it's easy to hang on to while I'm using it. That's great. And then that's backed up by the fact that the blade is plenty sharp. It's ground well. It's tumbled. It looks nice, right? It's super functional. And it's made out of D2, which is great. I, I love D2. I use it all the time. I think it's awesome. Uh, so no issues there. This is just exactly right. The only thing that I don't like is that CJRB still prints China on the blade. I know it's from China. And most people who buy it are going to know it's from China, too. We just don't really like seeing that. Most people don't aren't like, hey, can you put China on the blade for me? I really like that. I know that there's probably laws and you have to, you know, just I wish it was somewhere else. Maybe on the inside of the liner or something like that. And then also the serial number J1912. I mean, again, I'm sure there's they have their reasons for putting that on there. I just, if this said CJRB right here and D2, I'd be happy with that, you know, but it, again, the, those, those little tiny things, it's not, at, it's not in excess, right? The billboarding isn't nearly as crazy as like Microtech or Kershaw. Kershaw puts the paragraph on there and Microtech puts that big banner on the front, right? It's not that bad. That's just, that's just me being nitpicky, right? Um, there is no jimping up here. I'm not totally convinced that it needs it, but I think I would have liked just a little bit of jimping about from here to here. I think that would have been excellent, but it's not something that's absolutely necessary. I'm trying to think about where I would use this knife. And this is a knife that I pretty much would carry in almost any situation, whether it's just EDC around the house, EDC around town, right at the office, or if I'm going to some event or if I'm going camping, hike, whatever, if I'm working on the roof. Yeah, I would carry this just about anywhere. And I think given that, you know, idea, I, I think I would have preferred some jimping up there. Um, there is some nice rounding back here on the back of the blade. So that wraps nicely around the stop pin. Lots of surface contact there. That'll help with uh, liner lock wear over time. So that's great. Like I said, uh, the, uh, the handle scales look absolutely excellent. I mean, they are truly flawless. There's nothing sharp or anything like that. This does have a slot milled into the side so that it can accept the pocket clip. I know people get bent out of shape about that. They're like, I have to look at that slot. Uh, listen, me personally, I don't care. And I'd rather it be there and cater to people who are left-handed and at the same time ensure that the pocket clip has a space to sit without play. An early review that I did of CJR, uh, a CJRB uh, knife, I got frustrated with the pocket clip because it moved around because it wasn't set into the G10 scale. It was sitting on top of it. I said, there really needs to be a slot there. I, could, I honestly couldn't care less that there's a slot milled into the side of this and the color of it actually masks that almost completely they give you an extra screw that you can use if you strip one out the pocket clip sits nicely in there carries absolutely deep it's being prioritized above everything else so it's in the right position it's just fantastic the only thing i don't like is what i always complain about on cgrb knives and it's got a little bit of a bill so if you snap that clip right i don't know if you can get another one from cgrb i don't know how easy that would be it does have a bill, so it's probably going to snag on something at some point, and hopefully you can just take it off and bend it back, right? Other than that, though, it's a great clip. It's very easy to get over the outside of your, you know, pants pocket. Uh, easy to, uh, you know, you know, just push it all the way in there, and it carries deep, and then getting it back out is a breeze because of the smooth surface of the G10, 
right? It's excellent. Um, so that's a little nitpick there. Uh, lock up is absolutely solid. No blade play up, down, left, or right, no matter how hard I wrench on it. And most knives that I wrench on, I can get a little bit of blade play. So that's impressive because this is a very inexpensive knife. It is also extremely easy to disengage because there is a large cutout and this area right here is not aggressive. So it's very easy to disengage this knife, right? And do this all day. It's no problem. Detent is great. And guess what? It is absolutely centered. No detent lash, no play in the closed position, no wiggle on the, it's solid, solid. There's so many elements here that I would not expect that I would give up basically a free pass to on a budget knife and they still got it right. Guys, this, the Civivi Praxis was my favorite budget knife. Um, and truthfully, this, the Civivi Praxis, um, and then the CJRB Centros were the two most impressive budget knives that I have ever handled up to this point. I'm going to be doing a video talking about budget knives again in the near future. But listen, the Feldspar is absolutely in the running for the greatest budget folding knife I have ever, ever experienced. This, I have no idea why people aren't talking about this more. Maybe because of the, the simple and boring aesthetic, right? I don't know. This is a vastly, vastly underrated knife. <laughs> I was so blown away by this, uh, playing with it and experiencing it. And it's just, it is so pocket friendly and it is so well made. It's wonderful. Let me put the cherry on top of this for you guys. The price on this knife. This knife comes in at $37. If you hate the profile of this knife, you don't like the pivot color, they don't have any colors that you like, I can completely understand, right? If you can overlook any of that, you know, if that's a problem for you, uh, in almost any situation, this knife is worth overlooking whatever it is that's bothering you and going for it. Again, my nitpicks being, I wish it had a slightly larger forward choil, no big deal. It's got T6 screws, no big deal. The pocket clip might snag on something, no big deal. Everything else about this knife is wonderful. This is a wonderful, wonderful, well-made tool, right? Oh my goodness. Absolutely one of the best budget folding knives that exists and possibly I need to do some thinking and I need to take a look at everything that I, you know, all that I've reviewed and make sure that I have my thoughts all collected. This pops, this might just be the greatest budget knife. I mean, bang for your buck here. It's so, it's so hard. You know, I have to think about what the Civivi uh, Praxis brings to the table that this doesn't and dollar for dollar, whether or not I actually think that that's worth it. But yeah, I'm serious, guys. This is a knife worth picking up. And at 37 bucks, it's not going to set you back right? It's also a fantastic knife to give somebody as a gift, somebody you're trying to get into the, the better part of the knife world, right? If they've been carrying around m and other garbage, right? And you want to get them a better knife, you want to set a good example without it breaking their bank or your bank. This is a fantastic starting knife. And again, remember guys, if it's like, well, it's, it's so big, this, they make a smaller one. I'll link them both. Oh my God, this is excellent. This is definitely going on my most recommended knives playlist. It's also gonna go on my cheap knives I like playlist and it's also going to go, I think for, this is this has happened very few times in this channel. I'm also putting this on my favorite knives of all time playlist. Um, it's it's all three of those things, guys. This is, this is that good. I am that happy with it. And I really, I mean it. I think this is underrated. This is, it's crazy underrated. I have no idea why the, the knife world didn't just explode in, you know, in, in happiness and, and just, <laughs> I don't understand it. Some of the reviews on this knife are four to six months old, I think. So it's like, what the heck? Oh my gosh. I wish that I would have experienced this knife sooner. I'm really, really excited about this. Going on 24 minutes now. I think you guys get the hint. Pick this knife up. It is wonderful. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscri subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.